Hi everyone, tonight on Stitching with Sarah, I'll be giving you uh, an update on what I've been sewing, so my work in progress. Uh, the sewing tutorial will be for how to make an adjustable strap on any bag. Um, I have an interview with Christy of Love You Sew. I'll be showing another Minikins preview for my Zeppelin pouch, and I have some customer photos at the end. So, I'm Sarah Lawson from, for, from Sew Sweetness, and this is Stitched In with Sarah. Okay, so the whole reason that I started Stitched In with Sarah on Thursday nights is that I was hoping that you would be my sewing motivation and that I could be some of your sewing motivation and I want to get to our UFOs, so a, a UFO or a work in progress every week. The goal is to get our um, sojo going, uh, finish up some projects, use some of that fabric in our stashes so we can go out and get some more maybe. Um, but um, I'm going to be showing you on Thursday nights what I'm working on and after we go off live I'm hoping you can post a photo in the comments of what you finished this week So I want to say hi to everybody jumping in on the chat. I see Becky, Tara, Melinda, Janet, Vicki Thanks so much for joining me everyone and um, Hopefully we can get some sewing done tonight or this weekend. So what I I'm sewing on right now and I finished it literally 10 minutes before we went live. Last week I was working on a table runner. Tonight I was working on my new minikins and trying to hurry up and finish them all. So um, if you're new to minikins or the word minikins, uh, these are 12 patterns that I'm coming out with on October 23rd. That's this Monday. 12 patterns with videos. They're all small accessories, 15 steps or less. Fat quarters for most of them, so fat quarter for exterior and lining, minimal supplies, but anyway, I was working on finishing these I Spy pouches, so I made the green one already. Um, at the end of the summer, this is the size medium. Um, as you can see, it fits my rotary cutter and scissors, um, but these come together really quick. There's no binding. Um, the zippers got no, got lovely finished edges on the inside. And there's the clear vinyl on the front. I used eight gauge weight of clear vinyl, but you can use a heavier weight if you want. Uh, here's the size small. Um, I use this one for my Orifil threads. It's the perfect height for, for storing them. Um, hi again to everybody who's joining in. Terry, Carla, Christy, Libby, Nicole, uh, Jenny, Donna. So anyway, this is size small of the I Spy pouches and Here's the size large. My, my daughter put her markers in the size large. Um, but anyway, this, these come together really quickly. I think I said already the minikins were all uh, 15 steps or less. This particular one I think is nine steps, so really fast and easy. Um, anyway, this is what I finished up my work in progress uh, for, for tonight. And again, um, after we go off being live, I hope you'll post photos in the comments of what you finished up this week what you've been sewing or what your progress is so far. Um, before I get to the sewing tutorial for the week, I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Do you like separate storage for each type of sewing supply that you have in your sewing room? So like in the case of this particular I Spy pouch, um, my threads in this one. Um, um, before I wrote these patterns, I admit I, I didn't have anything that I was sewing for separate things in my sewing room that I was storing. So maybe wonder clips or just, you know, every little thing having its its own place to put it in. And uh, before this year, I have to admit that I was just doing the bag patterns, just writing bag patterns. And I thought for, for some weird reason, I thought small accessories were, I sort of poo-pooed it. Like, you know, zipper pouches, they've been done before. I'll, you know, bags are, they have all this stuff going on. They're so exciting, but um, now that I've worked through the series of the Minikins patterns, there's so many options and there's so many details in small accessories and I don't know why I didn't really pay them enough attention before, but um, as I've written the 12 for the Minikins, I definitely have now and I do have my storage uh, for my sewing supplies now. So again, let me know in the comments, yes or no, do you have separate storage for um, all of the items in your sewing room? Um, I see in the comments, Libby said, I like them for retreats, definitely. I see a lot of ladies coming to sewing classes or retreats and they have all their, 
They're very organized. Not, besides having their fabric and interfacing cut out for the project, they have everything. They know where to find it in their sewing bag because it's in its own separate compartment, which I think is really cool. Um, but anyway, let's move on to the sewing tutorial video for the week on how to make the adjustable strap. Um, really quick, if you haven't made an adjustable strap before, it's just a little bit of hardware on the bag with a slider, which you just move to make the strap longer or shorter. Um, this is a bag pattern that I wrote last year that I never really did anything with, but an adjustable strap is super handy. So I hope you'll enjoy the sewing tutorial. Be sure to share with your sewing friends on Facebook. Uh, so be sure to hit, hit the share button and here's the tutorial for how to make the adjustable strap. Now it's time to make and attach the strap. So get out your long strap piece, flip to the wrong side, and we're going to press in half wrong sides together. Okay, open out the strap again and press the bottom long edge in toward that center crease. And we're also going to press the top edge in toward the crease as well. Okay, and refold along all of the creases that you made and that will enclose all of the raw edges on the strap and then just go ahead and repress that. Okay, now we're going to press the strap extender in the same manner. So you're going to flip to the wrong side and you want both of the short edges to meet. Okay, open out, press the bottom in toward the center crease, and then press the top down toward the center crease. And then repress. And we're gonna take both the strap extender and the strap over to the sewing machine and top stitch both of the pressed edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
Okay, so to create the adjustable strap, we're going to take the strap extender and the metal rectangle and slide it on so that the raw edges of the strap extender meet, just like that. And grab the body of the bag, and you can attach it to either the, the right or the left side. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to center that strap extender on one of the side panels with the raw edges aligned, and then just stitch across using an eighth of an inch seam. Okay, next you want to grab the strap and the metal slider, which should be a piece like this with a metal bar in the middle, and the bar will either slide or it might be a stationary bar that's centered in the middle. Either one is fine. But you want to thread that strap under and over the metal slide so that it looks like that. Okay, now take the bag and we'll consider this the right side of the strap. So grab the right side of the strap and place it right sides down on the remaining side panel. And again, you want it to be centered and with the raw edges aligned. And we're gonna stitch using an eighth of an inch. Okay, like that. Okay, so you've got the strap extender on one end and the long strap on the other end. So you make sure the strap is not twisted. And we're gonna thread the other end of the strap through the metal rectangle. And it's gonna go under and over that middle bar. So the, basically the underside of the strap. Okay, pull the strap out a little bit just to give yourself a bit of extra room. And we're gonna actually fold under the end of the strap and stitch the strap to itself. So the piece that came through the slider last is where you're stitching that end of the strap down. So this is what it'll look like. I like to just go ahead and with two lines of stitching, stitch the end of the strap down to conceal the raw edge. the strap is secured and that's how you make an adjustable strap and then just go ahead and trim any threads hanging. Don't forget to hit share if you like that sewing tutorial video and I wanted to say hi and welcome to everyone that jumped in while that sewing tutorial was going on. I noticed my friend Hillary, Hillary works at Orifil, uh, jumped in, in the middle of that chat so Hillary we've got some Orifil over here. Um, Kathy wanted to know, she had a question in the comments, what kind of sewing machine I use. I have two Jukies. I've had the first one for uh, almost five years, I think. It's a Juki 2010, and the other one, which is basically the same exact thing as the, the 2010 I bought this year, it's the QVP 2200 Mini. So it looks exactly the same as my other Juki, except it has a blue stripe on the side. So love my Jukies. Um, they're straight stitch only, but um, great for bag making. All right, so my new thing is that I'm asking if you are a bag lady, and by that I mean if you sew bags or even zipper pouches because I, I include zipper pouches and accessories in the realm of bag making. Um, so tell me in the comments and I know I definitely am, but uh, be proud about it. Um, say I'm a bag lady if you're a bag lady. So let me know in the comments if you are. Um, next up, I have an interview and I notice uh, my interviewee just jumped on in the chat, um, but my interview this week is from Christy from Love You So, and if you would like to see more from Christy, the link to her website is in the description, but 
Um, I, I will be interviewing people who make my bag patterns every week on Stitchin' with Sarah. And I hope that you'll go ahead and if you finish a Sew Sweetness bag, post it in my Facebook fans group. Again, that link is in the description as well. Um, but this week's interview is from Christy from Love You Sew. Okay, so my interviewee today is Christy from the website Love You Sew. And I'll put the links to her website and all of the social media in the description so you can check out um, her blog and a lot of the offerings that she has. But I feel like Christy is one of the most prolific sewers that I've ever met. And I know a lot of people have told me that about myself, but I think Christy is way more, and her kids are younger than mine, so my kids are nine and almost 11, and her kids are what, kindergarten and preschool, is that correct? Uh, first grade and preschool. First grade and preschool, and I feel like every several days, or at least once a week, she has a new sewing project that she's posting on her social media. So I'm totally jealous at all the sewing that she's getting done. Um, she started releasing patterns. She has her Claire fold over clutch, so you'll wanna check out that pattern as well. Uh, but Christy, how long have you been sewing bags for? Bags, I've probably been sewing for about like, probably a little over five years or so. Mm -hmm. I've only been sewing for like about seven. So are bags your favorite thing? Cause I know you're making quilts and garments. Uh, what's your favorite thing to sew? I feel like it's kind of like, I like everything. Um, I like bags cause they're a quick, um, I don't need to, <laughs> yeah. um, I don't have to put them on my body to, you know, make little <laughs> tweaks here and there. It's nice, mm -hmm. easy, and, you know, it works for, you know, just about every, you know, body and body type. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. So what So Sweetness bags do you have to show us that you've made? Oh, I've got a lot. Well, these are not all that I've made, but um, these are the ones that are, happen to be um, in my studio right now. So I've got a lot of crimson and clover cases so i've made all three sizes so large medium and small and so i've got and you made some of those for charity as well is that right yeah some i've made a bunch covers? of them for um raffles for school raffles mm -hmm. um they they're just like easy to um i think i've used the medium to put like a panel and i've used like initials mm -hmm. uh of the school and like the school district to put on oh, know, wow. like a little bit of like school spear and a little bit of like school mm -hmm. pride. So these are um, good, easy ones because everybody likes a good train case. You know, you can right, throw right. toys in them, you can throw cosmetics in them. I think, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll show you, and I actually use them in real life because this one holds like all my nail polishes. <laughs> oh, cool, awesome. <laughs> And then this one holds like, it's kind of, it's kind of embarrassing, but it's, it really does like, it's a lot of makeup, <laughs> it's a lot of makeup in there. And then I use um, a lot of the patterns for my boys. So I use like the Kismet train cases cause they're a little bit smaller. So you can see like they're a little bit smaller. Um, they're a nice quick sew. Um, and I use these for travel. So the boys will throw all of their toys inside and you can tell, see, look, one likes Bumblebee Transformer because he's got yellow and one likes, oops, and one likes Optimus Prime. So he gets all I the see. red. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so these have been great because I like the creative maker case and, you know, it's all customized to them and their level. So this is for my little guy. So I've used... Um, I've made the loops for his markers a little bit wider for the wider markers. Yeah, and I was just going to ask that because I noticed the markers were the thicker markers. Yeah. Nice. So he's still learning to write. He's still, <laughs> you know, getting all that down. So he has the larger markers, whereas um, my son, which I, I actually couldn't find his case this morning, he has the real skinny markers and like the color pencil. Okay. So his spacing is a lot smaller. So I love that. I love that I can uh, customize for mm -hmm. each boy um, and, you know, work it toward their level. I also have my very first, this is still my very first bag, <laughs> is the uh, aeroplane bag. Um, and I actually got to see that airplane bag in person. I was teaching in Ohio over the summer and Christy came to my workshop and my lecture and the lining I super love the lining in your bag. I love yeah, it. Yeah, so well, here's the pocket, but it's, 
satin. I use some satin on the inside for like a big bright pop. And it just kind of, I don't know, it, I feel like it um, adds a little something extra special, you know, a little extra fun surprise. And it kind of takes, I don't know, I feel like it takes the bag up a notch. You know? So you use that gold, is that uh, faux leather or vinyl for the uh, straps yeah. on the bottom? Um, it's, I guess, both, right? Um, it's leather vinyl from one of the big box shops. And so you said that was your first bag. Was the vinyl difficult to sew with? Did you have to practice beforehand? Oh, yeah. I mean, I yeah. just, I didn't even know how to make straps at that point. I, you know, the easiest thing for me to do was only sew through two layers. I was sewing with a Singer Quantum Stylist at that point. Right now I have a Juki, mm -hmm. the same as you. But, oh, yeah, it was like a hot mess. <laughs> I had to put, I didn't have a Teflon foot. I... I think I sewed the whole thing with like tissue paper underneath and mm -hmm. I I mean I just was googling all over the place to try to find out how I can make somewhat of a pretty strap um, and you know eventually made it happen. <laughs> Well, I feel like you were really shooting for the stars with all the things you were putting together with that bag because you said it was your first bag you have the satin on the lining the vinyl on the straps and it looks amazing. You know, well, for your first you can, bag. well, you you can see, like, I completely forgot the darts. <laughs> Nobody would ever know. And actually, with the uh, ver uh, horizontal stripes, it kind of almost looks better without the darts because the darts would sort of break up the yeah, it yeah, the stripes, okay. it, you know, it would break it up a little bit. But yeah, I completely forgot the the darts. I thought I was like, you know, I was doing such a great job, and then you know, I flipped it out and was like, oh. It's, you know, I completely forgot a step. Um, but, yeah, and so now I just keep it for myself. That's what, you know, when I make a big goof, I end up keeping it all for myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to remember. So my next, my next question was on modifications, and I know you have the Appaloosa bag to show. So what kind of modifications did you make on that bag? So with the Appaloosa bag, uh, the class that I took with you, mm -hmm. um, I decided to uh, quilt. I actually stuck with a pretty, um, I guess, you know, semi-solid fabric. So I used a just a black denim, and then I decided to quilt the top. I kind of took a took some inspiration from uh, some of the bags that are out there. Um, ready to wear bags mm -hmm. right now so I did some quilting um, up top just to kind of give it a little bit more definition some texture and then I added rivets all the way around oh it's so good <laughs> so good with with the gunmetal and I'm so yeah and I, I think it, make, it looks so fashionable and I know I was reading your blog post about this particular bag and you said <clears throat> excuse me the pattern you thought would initially not be your style, but you totally made it your own with all the modifications that you made to it. And yeah, it's a super stylish bag and I love it. Yeah, I am I mean, like I thought it was like a, a good challenge, you know, cause like, I mean, you have a lot of patterns out there. So, you know, I would, <laughs> pick, you know, I would pick some, you know, probably something, well, plus since I've been making bags for a while, you know, I would have probably picked something that was a little bit more challenging, you know, mm -hmm. while having you in class, I would have picked something probably like really difficult um that probably the rest of the class wouldn't have wanted me to pick um, <laughs> but yeah so like it was just it was a fun challenge to see like what bag was offered in the class and then yeah how to make it my own kind of mm -hmm. use you know what fabrics because I was thinking about fall because the class was I think what at the end of August so mm -hmm. I was kind of yeah. in ahead like okay what am I gonna what do I always wear which is black and mm -hmm. what's going to go well with my, you know, my black wardrobe. So I mm -hmm. said this ended up being um, awesome. And I love it because, you know, not only is it something that I wouldn't have chosen, but there's like a ton of pockets, which mm -hmm. I totally need in my life. Okay, so now that you've showed us all the bags you've made, um, is there something in particular that you learned, like maybe a certain skill when making them? Or is there something that you struggled with? Um. Each one, I feel like I kind of learn a little bit more. Um, I mean, working with like all the uh, soft and stable can be mm -hmm. difficult. Um, and then through all the layers, I mean, I 
I mean, you got to get strong. You got to like <laughs> handle some of this stuff. <laughs> and um, so like through each one, like I make sure to use, you know, I increase my needle size when needed. If I start skipping stitches, I know like for sure I need to bump it up to like a 14, 16 needle. And um, I, you know, I try to, I mean, if I go through certain areas that are really thick, I will hand crank. You know, take mm -hmm. it slow, I'll hand crank it and see if my machine can handle it. If not, um, you know, we'll just have to either, you know, sometimes I'll even go through, I'll cut out some bulk, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a good you idea. know, through the interfacing. I'll just take my little scissors and try to cut a little bit of bulk out. And I'm also a big proponent of using a hammer. I oh, really? Yeah. Just a regular hammer? Yeah, I'll just use a regular hammer. You should test it out because it can... Um, you should, because uh, on certain fabrics, it can, you know, flatten and kind of like cause a little shine mm -hmm. in the fabric. But I'll use the, my hammer to uh, flatten out things because it really melts. It really melts out fabric. So you can always like put your, um, well, your pressing cloth. Sometimes I throw my mm -hmm. pressing cloth over top and I'll just. Oh, that's a really good tip. To kind that. of get through those seams. Because, yeah, not everyone has some, you know, industrial or semi-industrial right. machines like we do. And then right, right. when everybody make it bags. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, me too. Okay, so I was hoping you would share, share a personal story to end out this interview. And um, I know the story that you wanted to tell was in regarding to the workshop when you showed up uh, in the morning with your sewing machine and your fabric cut out. So what happened with that? <laughs> so the morning that we had a class, what we it started at about like nine a.m. Mm -hmm. And you already mentioned like I have I have two young kids, um, and of course my husband was in the shower. I was trying to get out the door, and my little guy, my youngest, um, you know, he needed help in the bathroom. So I, I mean. He was yelling at me. I was like, should I go and leave my <laughs> husband or should I stay? So obviously, I, you know, I'm going to be absent for the next couple of hours, so I should help help him out. And so, like, for that, so I was, like, running out the door because I was late. And then, what, I ended up at, so to speak, and completely forgot my sewing cord. So mm -hmm. I thought I was, like, Okay, even though I was already a little late, at least I have everything prepared. You know, I put everything in my bag to bring, except for my sewing cord. Yeah, so. and you definitely can't sew without that. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the whole class thought I was just like nuts. So I turned around. Luckily, I live close by. I only live about 15 minutes away. Mm -hmm. And so I turned around, um, came back here, and found my cords on the floor um, mm -hmm. that I forgot, and then came back and... Um, you know, worked on the Appaloosa bag with you, but yeah, I thought I was, I was a hot mess that morning. But you pretty much, if I remember right, you pretty much finished the bag during the workshop. You just had to, I think, sew the lining in because you wanted to use different hardware than what you had with you. Is yeah, that right? I had to hold off on putting in the lining because I was waiting on all the hardware and I ended, and I ended up extending out the strap a little bit too, but I had to wait on all this hardware because I was going to go with the nickel instead. Okay. So, yeah. I'm glad you waited. Yeah, that bag looks awesome. Oh, it's probably I'm so one of my glad favorite you helped me make the choice. I was like, oh, okay, this yeah. is what I have. I'll use yeah. it. And Definitely. Okay, so thanks so much to Christy for joining me today on this bag making interview. And make sure to follow Christy on her social media and see what else she's been sewing. So thanks again so much, Christy, for joining me today. Oh, thank you. Th thanks for having me. Okay, that was my interview with Christy, and her website is Love You So. I had a few questions come in through the comments while that interview was going on. Katie wanted to know if I usually match my thread colors to the fabric, and I usually try to. Like when I made this um, I Spy pouch uh, this morning, I tried to get, of course, I never have an exact match with thread color, but I tried to get as close as I could with the purple thread to the fabric. Um, I'm, me personally, I'm not brave enough to use say like a white fab uh, white thread on a black fabric I usually like matching it and also if I'm making a bag um, say this bag I will match the top thread to the exterior fabric and I like to match my um, bobbin thread to the lining fabric for any top stitching so when 
you open up the bag and you check the lining. Say, for example, if the outside fabric is pink and the inside is green, I'll match the bobbin thread to the green lining fabric so it's not glaringly obvious the stitches on the lining. Um, I had a couple questions before I show you these guys back here. Um, I saw a lot of new people commenting and joining in. So if you're new, would you let me in the, know in the comments? Just write new. I'm just curious to see who's new here. And where are you from? Um, in the last Facebook Live on Tuesday, there were a lot of people from other countries. So we had Indonesia, um, Brazil, I think Mexico maybe. So let me know where you're from in the comments as well. Um, my minikins uh, sneak peek for tonight is for this pouch. Um, I was originally calling it the dot bag and that was just the name of it. Um, but then I, I elaborated to have something not so general sounding and I called it the Zeppelin dot bag. But while I was having it tested, one of my pattern testers let me know that the term DAP, which is has been used for maybe the last century and especially during World War II for, they use the term dot bag to um, apply it to the soldiers uh, supply kits. Um, but then I found out that um, the company Samsonite was um, patent patenting slash trademarking the term DAP. So I just cut out the word DAP and now I'm just calling it Zeppelin pouch. But anyway, um, this is sort of a, a pouch that comes together with minimal pattern pieces. It's literally front, back, and handle. It looks like there's a side, a bottom, a front and back, but um, I sort of origamied it so it comes together really quickly. Again, it's just front, back, and handle. And through uh, creative stitching, everything comes together and there's a side and there's a bottom. But I used Allison Glass Adorn garment fabrics for this um, pouch and it's a border print which is really cool because you have the monochromatic uh, flowers on the front but because this was a garment fabric this is a lawn it was a little bit thinner and I wanted it to be a little bit more structured because I was using it for a pouch and so I interfaced it uh, with Pellon Shape Flex before I attached it to the foam which the foam's in the pattern uh, but that Shape Flex portion is not but anyway I think it makes a really cool pouch but um, this is the Zeppelin pouch as part of minikins that are coming out this Monday, October 23rd. Um, to round out, stitched in with Sarah, oh, we have a few comments. Uh, Donna wanted to know, do you use Orifil 40 weight on your bags? Um, I do use 40 weight generally. I have some 50 weight in my stash uh, because I use it for quilting as well. So if I don't have the 40 weight color that I need or that I want to match to, I'll use 50 weight thread instead and that, that usually seems to turn out okay. Um, Shinova wanted to know what's your favorite threads to use. Orifil I like a lot. I used some Sulky 30 weight recently, which I liked for top stitching. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's about thread, what I like. Um, on to some customer photos. So if you make a bag um, from one of my patterns, be sure to post it in my Facebook fans group. The link's in the description. Oh, also I had a question from Betty that I forgot to answer. Betty wanted to know, she made a lot of bags, um, as the purpose of Stitching with Sarah is to uh, post your finishes for the week. After we go off from being live, you'll be able to post photos in the comments. For some reason with Facebook, while we're live, you can't post a photo, but after we're done being live, you can. So uh, stick around uh, an extra minute after we go off live and post photos of your finishes for this week. Whatever you finished, a quilt or... Um, some embroidery, make sure you post the photo in the comments because I'd like to see what you're working on. Anyway, on to the customer photos for the week. The first one is an Appaloosa bag made by Estelle. And I really enjoyed the, the, the light, pretty fabrics that she used and she made a matching accessory uh, box pouch to go along with that Appaloosa bag. So great job, Estelle. Um, the second photo is a Sublime bag made by Teresa. So I had a contest last year for uh, people who made bags for my patterns and uh, any bags were eligible. So my free patterns, magazine patterns, book patterns, or standalone patterns. And Teresa was one of the winners. She made the Sublime bag and she used uh, turquoise vinyl. She used a lot of custom hardware in sort of an antique brass finish and like a Southwest print. And I think her bag just came out amazing. I love all the extra details that she added to it, especially with the hardware and the matching zipper. Um, the third photo is the Lilium, Lilium laptop bag made by Katie. So Katie 
my Lilium laptop bag comes in two different sizes and it's extra padded to protect electronic devices. So not only does it have the foam interfacing, but it has half inch craft foam. And I think maybe I'll be showing a tutorial soon for how I use that craft foam. But in my Joann's, it's um, half inch wide, it's green craft foam. And um, I have a clever way for um, attaching it in the bag so you don't have to sew through it because it's kind of thick at a half inch. Uh, but Katie made hers in a Star Wars theme. So this is R2-D2 and it's so cute. I really love how this came out and I love the, the white trim. It really looks like the actual robot slapped on a, a laptop bag, but excellent work Katie on that one. And the last customer photo for this week is the filigree double zip pouch made by Jazine of Allie and Me. That's her website. And Jazine has a, a blog that's both in English and German language. And she made her filigree pouch with fabric weaving. So uh, there's a tool called the Wefty Needle, which is a really inexpensive plastic weaving tool that you use to um, slide your fabric through it. And it weaves the fabric in and out to create. Jazine made this really beautiful design on her filigree pouch. Uh, but just ideas for extra details or techniques you can use on some of my patterns. And this pouch came out just great. So. Again, be sure to um, post your finished So Sweetness bags in my fan group. Link is in the description. And hope you got some sewing done tonight. Uh, the goal is to get some sewing done every week and post your photos as soon as we go off from being live in the comments. Uh, Terry had a good question uh, before we sign off for the night. Terry wanted to know, do you allow someone to teach a class using your pattern? Definitely, yes, please teach classes at your local quilt shop with my patterns. The only thing that I ask, and I think other pattern designers would ask the same thing, is that everybody has their own copy of the pattern. Um, you're not sharing off the teacher's copy, but yes, please uh, teach uh, workshops or classes for my patterns. That would be great. And if you do send me an email, I want to see class photos of what everybody made and um, their beautiful finished bags and their smiling faces. So yes, please do. Um, Diana had another question. Uh, Sarah, I have the original Sizzix, the red one. Will your dyes work with it? Um, I checked. I had another question, the same question uh, a few weeks ago. Um, I think the Sizzix machine was called the Big Red Machine. It was a very, it was an older Sizzix machine. And actually, Sizzix let me know that that particular machine does not work with my dyes. So unfortunately, it doesn't. But if you don't have a Sizzix machine and you're looking to purchase one, a good option would be the Sizzix. Uh, Big Shot Pro. It's economically priced. It collapses and folds so you can store it easily and it works with my dies. So um, that's the Sizzix Big Shot Pro. So um, there's some more questions. Let's see. Uh, Donna says, will you be using more hardware in future patterns? Also, do you think you'll sell more hardware? Or do you have a US source you like to recommend? Actually, my favorite place to buy hardware isn't in the US, but it's in Canada. It's Emmeline Bags, emmelinebags.com. And I feel like she's got really reasonable rates, even if you live in the US or another country, and she has discounts for um, if you've purchased over a certain dollar amount. So um, really affordable. You can buy in larger amounts if you use similar kinds of hardware pretty often. Um, let's see. Laura wanted to know, are we allowed to make and sell bags using your patterns? Yes, definitely. Um, the home sewist can make bags to sell at craft fairs online using my patterns, and please do. And if you do, let me know, send me pictures, send me links. Um, I'd love to share what you're doing on future Facebook Lives. Okay, so I think that's it for the questions for tonight. I hope to see you again next Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Time for Stitched In with Sarah.